So we have here a light source. It's either halogen, which is a black body emitter, and that it gives an emission spectrum which is mostly visible light near infrared. It's heat. A lot of heat and a lot of visible, very little UV. There's a second lamp in here, which is a basically deuterium. It's an isotope of hydrogen. And when you pass a spark through it, you get a lot of UV light out, and that's the source for UV. Yeah. So the UV light is what we're interested in mostly. We feed that through a, a solarization resistant fiber, so that's a fiber which will not start going opaque when you shine UV light through it. And then the light comes out here. Now I have visible light here, and if I move this over, this is just a stage, you can see a small dot there. Now we want that light to go straight into the hole. And this hole is called an integrating sphere. Inside it's completely white. And it's white where it reflects everything. Now in the UV it reflects a lot, but they're not perfect reflection. But it doesn't matter because you do a reference. So absorption spectroscopy, so that measuring how much light is transmitted, is a, a good technique to use because it doesn't matter how the, sh how the energy profile with different colors is for the lamp you're using, the shape of the lamp, because it's a relative measurement, it, it removes any differences between, for example, my setup and your setup. We always get the same result. So this is the light coming from the lamp. Now this is a visible lamp. So it's a, just a tungsten lamp that you use, the old fashioned lamps that you screw in, they get very hot, very energy efficient. And the reason they get so hot is they have a lot of light in the near infrared, which is, you feel as heat, radiative warmth and has very little in the UV. So this sort of lamp is very useful for, very useless for, for the tests that you want to do because you want to look in the UVA, UVB region, which is down here. So to deal with that, we turn on a different lamp, which is a deuterium lamp. It should appear in a few seconds. Yeah. See an overall increase, there's a very sharp line here which comes from deuterium. And if I turn off the tungsten lamp, this is the deuterium emission spectrum. Okay, so we have a, not so much light around this region. Um, that's just because the, this region is quite weak, but we have enough. So, without, it's there. And there's a bit of room light creeping in. And within, it's there. It takes a while for the chair lamp to warm up. We put the cloth in the way the beam and we would want to pin it down quite close so it's handier when it's horizontal you can pin it we should have a filter behind here to block off fluorescence if but because of the way we're detecting the light it's not a problem because the fluorescence is in a different part of the spectrum the fluorescence we get is over here and we're interested here so it's a problem you can ignore quite easily so I know the camera is uh, not so sensitive to, to bright lights but this is much more effective if I turn off those lights I just shutter the lamp. I take my background signal, which is nearly nothing. It's a little bit of those lights, which are quite broad. Nothing in here. I turn on the lamp. This is the spectrum with the lamp mm -hmm. on. And then to measure with the clot. This is it. So this clot is quite good at blocking. This is your percent transmittance. So it blocks in this region about 75% of the light and in this region about 40% of the light. Okay, now this is not an accurate me measurement because I'm not setting up correctly. But it, this is a, a UV blocker? No. No, good. Do you have a UV blocker? It's a quick, quick tight woven, and it blocks all the light, but not everything. But this is the region we're interested in. Um, so that's down to 325. This is the UVA region. So you get about so two or three percent transmittance. And if you look at how the NEN test is is applied by com by commercial providers, it's exactly the same as we do here.